I wanted to do the June men's national team roster video on Friday when the news was announced, but I'm glad I waited till after the weekend because a lot has happened that I can share with you here. A lot of the players that were called into that roster proved why they should be in that, what, 27-man roster by Greg Berhalter for four games in the month of June. But also Jesse Marsh happened. We've documented that a lot here on the Soccer OG. And as Americans, we can take a lot of pride in that. This was important. Even though some of my European friends going, why are you harking about Jesse Marsh so much? Why are you going on? He took over a team when they were in 17th place and he finished in 17th place. I will put it this way. Now, first of all, as an American, I want to talk about everything. I think my takes hold up against anyone. No one wants to hear my Lionel Messi take, even though I've been right about Lionel Messi for the last five years. Cross the board. People would attack me. I was right. So we have to talk about the American game. It gets views. It gets clicks. I'm American. Most of the people watching American. Everyone's welcome here. Uh, and I've done this for a long time. So we take a lot of pride. And when I first started, and we broadcast the Premier League at Fox, late 90s, the idea of a manager, an American taking over a management position for an interview, let alone actually getting the job, would have been laughed out of a room. Impossible. Impossible. No. Nope. But he got the job, a very important job. I mean, if Leeds United get relegated, that would be catastrophic out of all the work they put to get back into the Premier League. Now he has a full season. Now he's going to bring American players along with Brendan Aronson. But at the end of it, we can be very proud because there are American coaches out there, maybe watching this, that, would, that previously would have said it would be impossible if my journey went higher and higher than I could ever. Maybe I'm coaching five-year-old kids in Fresno. No way I could be a coach in the Premier League. Well, Jesse Marsh just proved that you can. Perceptions are going to be shed. There was a time in the Premier League where all the managers were British. Then Arsene Wenger came and Jose Mourinho and uh, Pochettino and Manuel Pellegrini and, and the list of Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Tuchel. And then all of a sudden, they show that the world is your oyster and you can get good managers everywhere. So that is a huge story. But today on the Soccer OG, we'll break down... The June U.S. Men's National Team roster. Check out the Soccer OG podcast coming out on Monday. I'll be joined by Casey Keller. We'll talk about the roster. We'll talk a little bit about Jesse Marsh. Talk about the fans running on the field. Pitch invasions, which have gotten out of hand. And check out this right here. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, now's a great time because June's going to be a lot of fun as we're going to follow this team through all four games. But let's talk about the roster. I want to get one thing out of the way. And even... Greg Berhalter was anticipating this, so he gave all the information about guys that weren't going to be there. He said Sergio Dest, Gio Reyna, Jordan Pifak, Josh Sargent out due to injury. Chris Richards, who's a key part here for this national team. He has to get healthy. He's been training, but the situation um, is we're following up on it. Not going to risk it. Ricardo Pepe, Gianluca Busio, James Sands, um, given some downtime. I don't think any of those three guys... Will, Pepe probably on that World Cup roster. I don't know about the other two. Not great news for those guys, I don't think. They would like to be here, I'm sure. Richie Ledesma had a self-assessment that he agreed with. He says he doesn't feel like he's ready to make the impact and compete for a spot on the team. If you're not ready, you don't want to put a bad performance there because it'll take away any shot you have. It. It's still an uphill battle for Ledesma, who has fought so many injuries to get back. And he's playing for a huge club in PSV Eindhoven, which carries some water here. But then he got to the big one. He got to the big one. John Brooks. And I look, this was a great, this was a roster I think everyone's happy for. You know, whatever side you are, I mean, the, the MLS hating crowd, the Euro loving crowd, <laughs> all those in the middle. I mean, Joe Scally got called in. That's a win. It's a win. <laughs> so the John Brooks story, and we've got you, you gotta put this aside, all right? We've got to put this to sleep. He's not going to be on this squad, as I have told you here. And I need everyone here who's followed the American game to realize that this isn't the only place where this is happening. Snubs happen all the time. Is John Brooks deserving to be in here? Yeah. Does he fit the profile of this national team that's the 24-year 24 24 average age? No. 
You want younger. This national team should be getting younger. They're building towards 2026. You don't bring in stopgap measures. I truly believe if you go to Qatar and you have to learn some lessons, fine. Maybe you don't. But it's, it's just not going to work. There's some issues there. So there have been snubs. Uh, Landon Donovan in 2014. By the way, the USA had a very successful World Cup then. Maybe the biggest snub in the history of snubs. Roberto Baggio in 2002. Uh, said he wasn't fit. Joe, uh, Trapattoni, the manager of the time. I mean, it's frustrating. But this is the way it is. It's not fair. It's playing. There's 23, 26 guys that play for a national team. Most of them don't even play. Not everyone's good. People are going to be heartbroken. I actually spoke to Heath Pierce, who I did the broadcast. He was one of the last cuts in the uh, 2014 World Cup. And, uh, or was it 2010? I'm sorry. Well, besides the point. Um, it was very cold. But snubs happen. Okay? All over the world. And managers don't have to explain themselves. I was getting email. I was getting tweets. Some, some, some media member should go investigate this. I go, me? I ain't doing that. I don't care. I like our team. This is it. And then they're sending me videos. Look how good John Brooks is. And they're sending me videos from the 2014 World Cup. It was eight years ago. He had his chance. He had his chance. Fortunately, we didn't qualify for the World Cup. But why are we still talking about this? And I'm not going over to find out. He hasn't been great. If he was so great, he'd be signing a fat old contract returning to Wolfsburg. So they say they're still keeping tabs on this. I think people, the one thing you would say, Greg Berhalter should be honest to the public. Does he? When, when, is, when have managers been up front with this stuff? Greg Berhalter, to me, strikes me as one of the more honest ones. Most of these countries, trust me, I have been there. I have sat with media members in Scotland, in Italy, in Argentina, in Brazil. And I've been in Mexico, and I've seen it. They keep tight-lipped. They don't have to tell you this. They don't owe us that. It's nice if they did, but most of them don't. Oh, bring it down a notch. Let's talk about the guys that are here. <laughs> but we had to address it because that's the, that's the tweets I was getting. This is the roster. This is how it looks. Uh, 27 players and most of the guys you would expect. The great news, there's a couple guys I talked about that I thought should be on there. By the way, the three keepers, those are going to be your three keepers at the World Cup. They're not going to bring in Stefan Fry. Uh, Sean Johnson was mentioned, didn't make it. But those three guys, and it, they could be all three in the Premier League next year. Granted, all backups. Uh, we mentioned that the Cameron Carter Vickers and Eric Palmer Brown, they were, Greg Verhalter talked about both of them a lot in his press presser. They could compete to be that third or fourth defender. That's a huge opportunity. The guys that made it that I was really happy for, Georgie Mihalovic at the top of the list. I think he's going to make it on that squad and possibly play because he plays so well with others. Uh, Malik Tillman, who said he was going to be with the U.S. Managed National Team turning away from Germany. You got to get him in there. Uh, it's an exciting prospect, maybe one for the future. Gaga Slonina uh, committed to the U.S., but that is probably going to be one for 2026. And then uh, Haji Wright, which we'll talk about a little bit in the forwards, the seven there. It's a loaded squad. It's very impressive, right? You look at those guys. Let's start off by saying what the squad looks like for Qatar, because seems when you talk to or listen to Greg Berhalter, he has, he has the team almost cinched up, okay? And we'll talk about where those, those, the remaining spots remain. I have 19 guys on the plane. Stefan Turner, so two, probably Horvath, I'd make it 20. Jedi Robinson, Yedlin, Zimmerman, Long, Chris Richards, Serginho Dest, uh, Weston McKinney, Eunice Musa, Tyler Adams, Kellen Acosta, Luca Della Torre, Gio Reyna, question mark, because the injuries, I just worry. Arison, Pulisic, Weah, Ferreira, and uh, Ariola. That's 19. Pepe probably gets in there too, is 20. Depending on what happens. Uh, what are you going to have? 26 players? Maybe bring it down to 23? This squad, this June camp is for tinkering. Maybe seeing some depth. But this is your team. That's what qualifying was for. To create the team that would go there. You don't pull the rug on guys that were there throughout qualifying and say no. So the guys that we see are going to be there. And I, I know some people roll their eyes with Paul Ariola, who's playing lights out and does something that no other player on this pool can do, and that's get vertical and get behind defenses. And now he's, he's hitting some bangers. 
So Paul Ariola makes it. He's in there. And this is not me saying that he deserves it or anything. You look at how these rosters have been created, you can tell. We're going to have a good team. We've been hit with a lot of injuries. And hopefully we we're healthy in November. By the way, April was horrific for U.S. players. Guys not starting, guys getting injured. But May, which is the end of the season in Europe, was pretty good. We've seen some breakthroughs there. I want to talk about the guys that have the most to gain in this situation. By the way, Weston McKinney, we talk about injuries. He's still coming back. Unlikely to start, maybe play a little bit in the two big games against Morocco and Uruguay. That's where you get the most out of this experience, right? Because those are two teams that are heading to the World Cup. Distinct styles that you can get really good feedback from. Then you have the Nation Leagues game. And Greg Berhalde said that's where Weston McKinney might be able to slot in and start. But they're not going to rush him in there. He did come back for Juventus this past weekend. Great news. Uh, but the guys that are coming in with an opportunity. Number nine. To me, Jesus Ferreira is our number nine as it stands. It's not etched in stone like many other positions. He's going to be on the plane to Qatar, but he has a chance to. He'll probably start that first game. See where he goes from there. But there's two attacking options. And Haji Wright coming in here is a, f a fantastic story. A guy who bounced around these European clubs, couldn't find his, his footing, and then he goes to Anatoly Spor in Turkey and he starts scoring goals at an incredible pace. It clicked in for him. He had to wait. He's been in U.S. camps before and now he's back. Massive opportunity. Hopefully he starts at least one game, maybe two, and if he gets a couple goals and he seems to fit with Pulisic and... Way and Aronson, then boom, he's in. Right? It could happen. Because he's more of a classic number nine, very exciting player. Georgi Mihalovic, as I touched on a little bit, demanded to be on there. He's been the best player in Major League Soccer. If I had to give you an MVP vote, he's the guy. Plays really well with others. I would love to see how he interacts because he put look, look he makes his teammates in Montreal so much better. He makes Romel Kyoto look like this elite. Uh, front man. He's a good, but he's not, you know, he makes another level. Georgi Mihalovic is a guy who plays in the sandbox well. So he has a shot to make in here too. These are the two, this is the most exciting de development. I would have liked to have seen Richie Ledesma, but the, the injury record and what he came out of his own mouth about where he is takes him out of here. It's probably too late for him to make the World Cup. The World Cup's coming up. By the way, we would have the World Cup in two weeks if this was a normal year. I don't know if I would be ready for it, but you would. You'd get ready. Now, the, uh, the goalkeeping situation we've addressed here and many other places, we discussed, do we bring in a, a, a veteran like a Sean Johnson or a Stephen Fry? And you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater here. Even though Zach Stephen had a bad day in the FA Cup final, Matt Turner is just coming back. Um... Ethan Horvath was the starting keeper for Nottingham Forest. Uh, uh, Samba, the guy, had an incredible for performance in the semifinals to get them into the, the promotion playoff final. Uh, so it turned out to be the right decision. But all these guys seem to be, it, they've invested so much. You don't just do a quick pivot. I, I, I think it's still going to be Fry. Turner could get in there and Horvath just in case. That's it. No one else is breaking into that for the foreseeable future. So that's resolved. And look, all these moments we get resolved, that's good. The one of the World Cup still in November, but it's closer than you think. You have this June camp. This is a huge camp. This is huge. They say they're going to arrive May the 27th in Cincinnati to June the 2nd. They're going to move it down to Austin where they have four games, obviously in Kansas City, Cincinnati as well, down there in Texas. And this is going to be the real dress rehearsal, so to speak. You're not trying to find out Who's going to start? You're, 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 you're seeing how fine-tuned your group can be. I think we, the first game, we'll be able to tell a lot about what the team's going to look like in Qatar, the starting 11, uh, with obviously a few exceptions because Serginho Dest would be in the 11 if he was healthy. Chris Richards, I think, is our best defender, would be in the 11. And then you would also have probably uh, Gio Reyna, maybe Ricardo Pepe. But you'd be close. You'd be pretty close to seeing what it would look like. So we got that a goalkeeper. As I said, you got to find someone to, to come in alongside with the Miles Robinson injury, you, what you would think is Walker Zimmerman. You couldn't put John Brooks in there with Walker Zimmerman. You need a mobile 
defender. And Greg Berhalter mentioned what they were looking for in a replacement, so to speak, for that position. And, you know, he's talking about running a high line. He's talking about uh, having a guy who can win duels. And with this, a guy who's going to have space behind him that he can have to recover and catch somebody who breaks. Um, we saw that for Chris Richards. Remember that Costa Rica game? It was, it was unbelievable. He is an athlete. And he is going to be our best defender moving forward if he stays healthy. Walker Zimmerman's a good foil. You've got to have a partnership that works well. Eric Palmer Brown, Cameron Carter-Vickers are in the mix. I think Eric Palmer Brown, Greg Berhalter likes a little bit more because he did bring him in. His versatility, being a, a super athlete with speed, could fit that profile, which came out of Berhalter's mouth as to what he's looking for. So right now, Aaron Long will stake a claim. He is athletic and fast. He's fast. He is a fast defender. I think people haven't seen enough Aaron Long if they're critical of him. Should be in Europe. Should be in Europe. So who fits Zimmerman? He's not going to take, pull Zimmerman. He doesn't want any more complications. So I think if Richards is healthy, it's Zimmerman Richards, which we've seen in the past recently. If not, I would tend to think it's Eric Palmer Brown based on what I heard. Maybe Aaron Long. Cameron Carter-Vickers is going to get a long look, and he could make the roster because I think what I have, where did I put that? Sorry, my, my notepads. Uh, I have one, two, six defenders. I think we get two more on that, on that roster, right? So that's the big question defensively. Left back is Anthony Robinson. He said he's looking for a backup left back. There are some options there. Bellow, Scally, they will compete. It's open. That's a spot that he's basically said we're looking to fill. Midfield, you're set. McKinney, Musa Adams. Your cover is De La Torre, Kellen Acosta. Uh, the sixth midfielder should be interesting. I mean, they're going to bring in. It could be Gio Reyna could be classified as there, but there's going to have to be someone else. Um, maybe as a, as a direct replacement for Tyler Adams. But that was what makes Kellen Acosta so valuable, that he can play all three midfield positions and he can play as a fullback. So he's definitely in there. Polisic Wea, Polisic Aronson, that's fine. And then who plays the center forward? We thought maybe we could bring in like a Polisic there. That's the job. A Jesus Veredas now, but others can do it. You should feel very confident about where the U.S. is at. Things are coming into view. Fewer and fewer question marks. We could still be worried about the goalie. We could be worried about number nine scoring goals. But we got to limit the questions and stop worrying about who's not, who's not in there. We already know the guys that support the guys that are going because we pretty much know who they are at this point. Let's have a good camp in June and hopefully some people step up. There are some jobs to be had. Stick here on the Soccer OG. Check out the Soccer OG podcast. Raw podcasts are available. We'll see you a lot over the next few weeks.